iHeart Art is proudly brought to you by Art Shed Online. For art supplies of all kinds at great prices, visit Australia's number one art supplier at artshedonline.com.au. You're watching iHeartArt and I'm Ying Wang and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some digital illustration and we're going to be drawing a really interesting fruit. It's pretty infamous, it's called the durian and I've got some reference images here. So basically these just help as a guide to proportions and just something I can reference while I'm drawing. So we're going to start by first sketching out our guidelines in this kind of light blue colour. So I've got my blank canvas and I've just created a new layer. So basically these guides will just act to kind of show me roughly where things are and help me plan out my drawing before I actually commit to anything. So the good thing about working on layers is that you can just delete the ones you don't want, keep the ones that you're happy with. So it's really good in terms of just the creative process. So I'm just adjusting the shape. So my reference image of this drawing is quite it's quite like a normal oval shape, but I might just end up exaggerating some of the angles to make it look a bit more interesting. So it's not just a plain shape. But so I'll mark out the outside shape and then maybe just roughly the angle and the length of this stem. And then also where this opening is. So I might actually make this a bit wider. about there and then draw the curve of this opening and the other side. Cool, so that's a really basic kind of guideline of the proportions of the durian. And so what I'll do is I'm just going to change the opacity of this a little bit. So it's, it's kind of quite a bit fainter and it won't distract me as much when I draw my line work on top. And for my line work on top, I'll pick a different colour. So I might go for a kind of medium blue colour. And then I'll also go for a thicker brush, I think. So when it comes to digital illustration, it's always good to just have a play around with the brushes that you have available. And when you try them out, try them out at different thicknesses. So you can really see the grain and the thickness. Let's go thicker again. Awesome, so with this illustration, I might start from the center and work my way outwards because most of the detail sits on the edges. So we'll start in here. So I don't know if many of you have tried durian, but it's a really interesting fruit that is kind of unlike anything else I've ever tried. It's actually illegal to have durians on public transport in parts of the world. And I think uh, when I went to Singapore, that was Definitely the case. You could see signs that literally had an image of a durian and then also just a cross over it, which was really interesting, I thought. And my friend who lives in Singapore, he was in such disbelief that I had never tried one that we kind of went to this market. And he there are a lot of kind of stalls that just sell durians in Singapore. And that was kind of interesting. So you could go there and they have these tables outside and you could just buy a durian and then they have forks there and you can just eat them from the fruit and they'll cut it open for you and everything. So we did that and it was kind of really warm in Singapore. It's kind of humid all the time. And the fruit has this really quite pungent smell. It's, it's kind of why they ban it on public transport, I think. And it's almost got this oily, meaty, fatty, of flavor to it and it's really unique and it's overwhelmingly rich so if you're in Singapore or even in Melbourne you should definitely try it it's unlike anything else it's, it's kind of meaty for a fruit so right now I'm kind of just drawing the outer edge of this incision that's been cut into the durian and with the outer edge I'm just kind of just making it a bit more undulating so it's not as straight as the inner edge and we're going to do that the whole way around. So this blue line work is kind of the line work that I committed to in a way. So that's one way to put it. 
and it will be the line work that we see at the very end. And I'm just using my turquoise colored guides to kind of show me where I need to be putting my line work. There's no real, um, it's not a, a lot of accuracy in this section. It's more just how I want to kind of add my lines. I'm making some of them larger, some of them smaller, just kind of varying it. So it's not all the same. Would That would be the key, I think. So we've kind of drawn this incision. And now I will start to work on these jagged spikes that are all around the outside. And to do this, because it's a bit more detailed, I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush. So maybe a third smaller and kind of zoom in. And we'll start again from this inside section and work our way outwards. So this section will just involve a lot of repetition of these spikes. So I'm going to start making these shapes. They're almost like the shape of when you get a soft serve ice cream and the top of it kind of has this little pointy bit. While we do this, I don't think we'll add any super detailed line work yet. We'll do that after using an even smaller brush. We might make some of these ones at the back smaller, narrower, so they seem further away than they actually are. And it's good to just zoom out sometimes and you can take away your guidelines to see how it's all looking without them. And it gives you just a nice kind of indication of how everything's looking. And so we're nearly done adding in these lines for the spikes of the durian. Just doing these final touches at the back. And then we'll zoom out and have a look. And so there we can see all the spikes of the durian. And I think now we'll go back up and we'll start to draw in the stem. And then after that, we can start to add maybe more detail in the incision. But with the stem, just kind of, it's quite a simple shape. So we might just add a few little kind of curves to make it a little bit less of a boring triangle. And that's the stem. And then now I think we will go into some more detail with a smaller brush. So I've created a new layer and I'm going to use the same brush, or maybe I might actually see if there's something a bit different and just make it about half the size. So we definitely get a finer stroke in it. And I'm going to start adding detail into this inner part here and kind of make it seem a bit more dimensional. So often with line work, if it's quite simple and it can be very flat. And that's one of the things about just doing line work illustrations. So when I zoom out, you can kind of see the difference in weight in the two lines. So it's a lot of repetitive work and we will also be turning this into a repeat pattern. In the background, you might see some kind of fabric and shirts and they're part of my graduate project. And I created these objects um, with digital illustration and repeat patterns. And the shirt that you can see in the front there is just similarly like line drawings and I repeated them and created this all over pattern. And one of the things with printing on fabric is just kind of getting the proportions right. So when you're working on a screen, you're often magnified or zoomed in. You're not actually seeing the size at 100%. So I'd always like recommend printing out um, drawing just to see what it would actually be, how big the illustration would actually be. And then you can have a gauge of how big you want to print it or how small you want to go. Especially when you're doing one-off things and you don't really have the luxury to do multiple tries because it can get quite expensive as well. And so I'm going to continue to add more line work. And then after that, we'll work on the incision and then the spiky bits, and then we'll start to play with color and turning it into a repeat pattern.
Welcome back to iHeart Art, I'm Ying Wang, and we're picking up and still drawing this durian fruit. Last, just before we were drawing line work and adding kind of detailed line work, I've kind of gone ahead and done detail on the rest of these spikes here. So it's a lot of just little lines, just to show a bit more texture. And we've just got a little bit more here that we'll finish off. And we'll start to add some more detail into the section where the fruit actually is, which is the center. But I was also thinking it could be quite cool to create a repeat pattern with this, but also in terms of creating a repeat pattern, we could create maybe a GIF or something and show the durian repeating itself. So that could be quite interesting. That's one of the things with digital illustration is that because you're doing it digitally, you can easily add in motion and it's quite fun to do. So we're nearly done here and I'll zoom out. And as you can see, we've got all these spikes in the drone and they're all illustrated. And now we'll zoom back in and add some more to the center of the fruit. So it looks like it's mostly broad strokes. So we might just use a slightly thicker brush. There we go. And start to draw some like nice kind of lines. Just like that. In a lot of my work, I really enjoy drawing things with a lot of texture. So often like animals that have lots of fur, often even fruits as well, plants, vegetables find that natural objects have really interesting textures as opposed to, um, you know, always drawing the same things. And it's good to kind of draw all these things and place them alongside each other, creating these kind of collages as well. With this inside bit, it's almost like a bit of a wood grain when you draw it as line work. So I'm kind of not going to cover all of it in lines, just some bits and maybe close some of the lines and add some curves especially around the edges and areas that are kind of maybe supposed to be in shadow or you want to show more of the form because we won't be shading much so as much as we can convey through line work we'll try and do that it's pretty free range so feel free to I'm pretty much just kind of drawing as I feel fit it's good to combine little strokes as well as big strokes just like that because it just breaks it up, adds a lot more interest as well. And we'll just do a little bit more on this side of the fruit as well. I often zoom in and out a lot when I draw um, just to kind of see what I'm really doing. And now I think I'll create a new layer and then I'll go into a smaller brush and just create some even finer line work. And I'll zoom back in and just draw some extra lines here. Often when you eat durian, I always watch the people selling them. They have to use this almost like huge cleaver to kind of cut it open. It's quite thick on the outside and it's got really quite a dense shell. Like you definitely couldn't just open it with a, a butter knife or something. So now that we've got all the line work for our durian, what I might do is we've got all our line work on kind of really different layers and I might combine them all just so it's all together. And I'll merge these and then using the channels tool this allows me to select just the line work so now that we've got that there we'll start to head into color and adding um, a background color to this durian so i'm going to use a bigger brush so we can kind of shade things in a big block when i shade in the color i often try to just go with a contrasting color or a complementary one just so you can see where everything is and let's make a pink durian today and I'm just going to shade this in and this can be really rough there's no real there's no real science to this so I'm just going to color this in 
So I'm going to keep colouring in here and then off to a back I'm going to try and colour in the rest of the Darun and then we'll start playing with repeat patterns. You're watching I Heart Art. You're watching I Heart Art, I'm Ying Wang, and just before we were colouring in kind of the spiky part of this durian fruit, so I've just finished colouring that up and neatened the edges, and I think what we'll do next is start to fill in the rest of the parts of the durian, and I think we'll keep it true to form and keep the centre of the durian a yellow colour. So I've created a new layer, and I'll just start shading in this centre bit yellow. So I think a real a real durian is actually quite like a, a pale yellow and it's quite fleshy. Kind of comes in these segments that you eat and they sell them by segment as well. So I'm just kind of roughly colouring that in and then I think we'll also make this kind of um, edge a slightly different colour as well and we might go for a lighter pink. So I'll eye drop this purple colour or pink colour and then just kind of choose a slightly lighter shade and then fill that in. And because it's a smaller section, I'll just pick a slightly smaller brush as well. And that means there's kind of a little bit less cleanup. Often with my illustrations, I'll tend to keep colour palettes quite minimal. I'll often use maybe two or three colour palettes, um, two or three colour palettes, and then it kind of ties things in, and I'll often choose shades that are like multiple shades of the same colour, so a light pink, a dark pink, and I might actually make this colour a little bit lighter. So maybe even lighter, just to show that it's a bit different. And I'm just using a colour overlay to do that, and that's really great about digital illustration, is that you can just quickly change things, and it's really quick. You can make all the mistakes you want to, and, and in the end, you wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to notice. So now I'm just neatening up the edges of the fruit here, just to keep it kind of clean. And then we will colour in the stalk. So for the stalk I've created a new layer and I think I want to make this darker. So it's kind of, I like having a range of darker shades, um, mid-tones and lighter shades. So I might go for something like that and shade that in and just neaten up the edges again. So now that I'm looking at it, I kind of feel like the dark blue line work is maybe a bit, um, maybe not the right shade. So what's great is that we can just kind of, you know, just adjust the color and Maybe make it darker. Something like that. So I think choosing the dark purple kind of ties everything together. So we've got all our layers here and we want to group them all together because the next step will be to kind of repeat the durian and create a pattern out of it. But I might actually see what this looks like with black. That's quite cool. So I might go with the black instead, actually. So now that we've got that there, I always duplicate things so there's always a, a back copy. And I'll just merge everything in this group. And then we can see that we can move it around and I'm just going to duplicate this. 
And because of the really spiky edges of the durian, you create this really quite intense pattern because it's almost like you've got pattern upon pattern. There we go, that's about the right size. I'm going to fill the whole frame with more durian. And just keeping the layers in the order that I want so it's all kind of organized. And then I might just change the background color and might go for an orange. Now that we've got that, I think it'd be really cool to turn this into a GIF. So we're going to head into window and open a timeline and just change it to create frame animation. And once we're in there, we hit create frame and I'm going to set the time to about five seconds and drag this in again. Actually, first I might hide all but one and drag a new frame and repeat the process. And then if I hit play and start from here, we can see that they all appear and disappear. So I've just created this frame animation and I think that's about done. You've been watching I Heart Art, I'm Ying Wang. And if you wanna see more of my work, you can head to Instagram. You can find me at Yingstagram with two eyes and I'll see you next time. iHeart Art is proudly brought to you by Art Shed Online. For art supplies of all kinds at great prices, visit Australia's number one art supplier at artshedonline.com.au.